Hey guys, Lou with LG Speed and Custom here. And in this video, we're back on the 32. My objective for this video is to focus on getting the car to start. Because once it starts, then we can, you know, it'll be like yard drivable, basically. I can back it in and out of the shop. Not road worthy, but good enough that we can move it around the parking lot and stuff, because pushing cars sucks. Some of the things that we got to do to make that happen is we got rad hoses to put on. I just picked up some hoses from my pal Rick at the auto parts store. So we're going to throw those on. Once the hoses are on, we can put coolant in this car. We've run a brand new fuel line from the tank to the firewall, but we got to go from the firewall to the fuel pump. As well, we had to change the fuel pump. Uh, for you regulars that have been watching this since the beginning, when I drove this car home and it kept dying on the highway, that's because the fuel pump couldn't keep up to the carburetor. So I got a new fuel pump to put on it that'll hopefully be able to keep up. We can put that on, run some fuel lines for that. We got to put a throttle pedal in it and figure out the throttle linkage. This car is its a little bit of a weird carburetor setup. This has a Mercury four bolt manifold on it that had like the teapot carburetors and someone has put a Carter or sorry a Rochester 2G on it which I guess is a common upgrade on the the four bolt Merc manifolds and the Carter or not the Carter the Rochester 2G is uh, you know I, I guess it's a I've never had one before so but everyone says it's a, a superior carburetor so it worked fine when it had fuel in it so I think I'll probably leave it for now. I think eventually I'd like to go to maybe a two carb setup on this, but that'll be down the road. Right now, I just want to make it run and drive. So we got to figure out throttle linkage for that. Headers, we don't have any exhaust on this. We've talked about putting headers on this car in a lot of previous videos, but it's just, it, we haven't got to it. Passenger side is easy, it'll bolt right on. Driver's side, we got to get a little creative with this Chrome F1 steering box. Uh, aside from that, I think we just need to run some wires to the ignition or to the coil so that we got spark and that should be it to make it fire up and move forward and backwards. We should probably put some oil in it. I think it still has oil in it, but I don't know how much oil is in it. So we'll probably just dump it and put some fresh stuff in. Same with the transmission in the rear end. We'll, we'll make sure that they got some fluid in them as well. So. On that note, let's get to it. We're gonna start easy with some rad hoses. So for the top, I've just got these corrugated flexi universal hoses that'll fit like that. They're a little bit on the long side, but there's room that we can, you know, cut an inch off each end and I think they will fit perfect. Uh, just a little shout out to Rick, the parts guy. One thing I appreciate about a good parts guy is when I went to pick these up, he already had hose clamps on there because there's nothing more frustrating than when you buy rad hoses, get back to the shop and realize you don't have hose clamps and the parts guy wasn't like, hey, you need hose clamps to go with that? The bottom, also super easy. Although the radiator has to come back off for that. When I put this rad on in a few videos, my brain stopped working for a couple minutes and I forgot to put lower rad hoses on. You gotta slide the rad hoses on as you're sliding the radiator grill assembly in. So they're a super simple, just a straight shot, straight hose. Normally I have, I just, buy like a 12 foot chunk of straight one and three quarter inch ID hose and cut it to fit. But when I went to get hose this morning, this is all I had left in my inventory. So I went to go buy more this morning and they didn't have any in stock, but found this hose at the parts store and this has, I need four and a quarter inch straight shots in there. So we've got, we can cut our four and a quarters out of this piece here. So let's do the bottom ones first. We're gonna take these rat, these um, support rods off and then there's a nut and bolt with a spring going through the cross member to the bottom of the radiator. 
we can take that off, cut our hoses, and slide them on. Before we take it off, we're quickly gonna measure though. That way, we only have to do this once. I'm pretty sure when I measured this earlier, when I went to the parts store, I needed four and a quarter. That gives us four and a half if we're right up tight against here. We'll make it four and a quarter and then we got a little bit of wiggle room. At least on this side, let's make sure this side says the same thing and it does. So we'll cut this four and a quarter and four and a quarter. All right, measuring from the end. Let's make a mark at four and a quarter. And then we'll make another mark a little bit further back. Four and a quarter. That should be just over eight and a half. Correct it is. So after we cut these out, we still have this cool little 90 degree piece, which will probably come in handy one day for a weird engine swap. So we'll save that. I've got a bucket under the bench with little weird hose cutoffs like this in it. So uh, you can cut this however way you prefer to cut radiator hoses. I like the chop saw. It smells a little bit, gives you a little bit of a burnt rubber smell, but it works so good and it's so fast. So that's what I'm going to do. I've cheated a little bit and rather than taking the radiator and grill assembly right off, I've just undone the top support rods and taken one bolt out and I was able to pivot it enough that we can slide this in. So I got my hose clamps on ready to go. I'm going to put just a little bit of grease in here just to make it slide together a little bit nicer. There's one side. And now we can slide. Yeah, there we go. Our bolt went back in. So we can put our nut back on and then go do that on the other side. Note that I've got the hose clamps situated so that I can get easy access to them. Like this one's not turned around facing inside, which would make it super awkward to work on. Yeah. Come on, get in there. All right, the grill's bolted back on. Before I snugged it down, I took my tape measure over to the hood over here, because I'm planning on running a full hood on this car. And I got measurements of from here to here, from here to here, and the bottom. I took those measurements off the hood. I then added three eighths of an inch to those measurements and set the grill and the radiator to those measurements with the idea, oh, oh fender brace to the, to the back of the leg. So the idea is that when the hood goes on, in theory, I should have three sixteenths gaps on both sides. In the real world, it's probably gonna be way out. 32 Ford four piece hoods take hours upon hours upon hours to, if you want them, perfect. I don't care about perfect. I just want a hood. So I don't know. That, that's a whole nother project for another day. This hood's pretty, pretty rough, but we're in the ballpark at least. So that's where I snugged it down. I'm going to tighten these hose clamps up on the bottom. And then we can move on to our top hoses and our radiator should be ready to radiate. So when I called Rick last week and gave him the measurements for this, I had measured from there, coming up 90 degrees to there, gave me 19 inches. He went through his book and discovered they don't make a 19 inch hose, which I'm not surprised, but they made a 20 inch hose, which is really close. 
And like I mentioned earlier, there is like an inch and a half on each end here that we can trim down. You can't cut this part here. It's got a coily wire through it, which gives it its, stops it from collapsing. But before we cut it, I just want to mock it up. Uh, where'd my grease go? Put a little bit of grease on here. Yeah, I just want to mock it up and see what it looks like. A 20 inch hose might be fine as long as it doesn't look awkward or weird, like should be okay. How's that look? Yeah, I think that'll probably, I think that'll probably be okay. I don't know, I might trim a little bit off. This kicks back just a little bit. So let's take like half an inch off each end and that'll give us our, you know, 19 inches we wanted. And hopefully that will shorten this hose up enough that it doesn't bow back like that and just makes just a nice arc. That's why I put grease on. So I just discovered something kind of cool. I was about to measure and mark this when I realized there's a line already on there. Some casting line or whatever that says A, this says B, and those are a half inch already. So I'm just gonna use those lines. I think this might be small enough that we can cut it with the Marty snips. Never cut anything this big in the Marty snips, but I'm confident these things will cut anything. Ooh, almost got all the way through it. There we go. Let's do that again on this side. These things are incredible. All right, let's try it again. There we go. What do you guys think of that? I think that'll be fine. That's, that's perfect. Let's cut the other side the same. Wait, 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 before we cut the other side. This one's a little further back. Let's mock the other side up first. It might be okay. I think I'm gonna trim a half inch just off this one end here, just to, Okay, they're not gonna have the exact same curvature because that thermostat housing's further back because that cylinder sits further back. But I think if we take a half inch off, we can get them, you know, pretty close. Ooh, that one was tight. Even with the grease. How's that look? Yeah, close enough, I think. It'll be fine. I'm gonna put some hose clamps on it. That's done. I just went to start fitting a overflow hose on here and ran into something a little bit annoying. This is pointing right to here and you know, the hose doesn't wanna go on. So that's, that's pretty annoying. Uh, I'm going to, I'll just wrestle with this for a little bit. I think I might be able to manhandle this on here. If not, uh, I don't know. We'll come up with a plan B, I guess. I gotta get a rad cap too. I don't have a radiator cap. Well, that took some persuasion and some grease and some pliers and a little bit of swearing, but I got it on there. Hopefully we never have to take that off again. I think we'll run this over to this bolt here and using a delt clamp to fasten that. And then we'll just do a hard line from there down to the bottom into some sort of overflow can. I guess we should go get an overflow can. Okay, what do we got over here? These are all full and they're way too big. I don't like using glass bottles because I had one shatter one time on an engine that was overheating. Uh, what do we got down here? These are all, these are all still full, so I don't want to dump those out. I've actually used this before to polish a car. Oh, uh, what else we got back here? Let's go to the other side. Here's the little model that Shane built me. Isn't that cool? Um, you know what? Let's just use this Pepsi can that we were going to use on the Roadster. The reason we didn't use this is because NHRA needs a 16 ounce 
catch can and this is only eight ounce but i don't plan on taking the 32 down the racetrack anytime soon so it'll probably be fine also they never even checked the catch can on the roadster when i went through tech so this probably would have been fine on there too so we'll probably mount it right in there and use this bolt holding the grill on just like we did on the roadster i found a aluminum piece of aluminum scrap that is already bent 90 degrees like that pretty thick so i think i will cut this end down drill a hole in there that goes into i guess it would sit this way so the radiator bolt goes through that way then this end we're going to curve to the same shape as the can so it hugs it put a little slot in there that a hose clamp will slide through and that will hold it in like that Okay, our overflow is done. We've got the Pepsi can mounted in that little aluminum bracket that I went and polished all really nice. And as you can see, you can't even see it. So that was a waste of time, but you know, you guys know it's polished. From there, we just mounted, put a little Adele clamp on this grill bolt hole that holds our hose in. And then I've just got some 5 16 copper nickel tubing running down with a little kick out to line up with here i clocked the can so that the the less faded side was exposed to the outside so yeah i think that's done we still need a rat cap and i think we can put water in it i'm uh i'm not gonna put coolant in it right now i always put water in first because if you have a leak water is way easier to clean up than coolant so i always fill them up with water first and if everything's good then i'll drain it and fill it up with coolant but we also have a heater that's gonna go in this car. And we also have these temperature gauge senders are in there. And I don't know if they work or not. I don't have gauges for this car yet. So I'm just gonna put water in it for now because we're gonna have to drain it eventually anyways to do the heater hoses and our temperature senders. So I think that's the next step. Let's put coolant in it. Not coolant, water. We're gonna put water in it. All right. it's. Six days later, and we're back on the 32. I was just about to fill the radiator. My garden hose is too short, so we'll roll this thing a little further forward. Got a rad cap the other day. Brand new seven pounder. So that should be all right. Flatheads usually run seven pound caps, although you can put bigger one. My Roadster's got a 13 pound on it, but because I don't know the condition of this engine, I don't want to put a 13 pound on there and then you know, blow the head gaskets or something out. I don't even know if that had happened, but I got a seven pounder. All right, I'm gonna run out there and turn the hose on. And hopefully this doesn't spew out everywhere. It probably will. We got water coming out yet? I just turned it on a little bit because I didn't want it to come gushing, but maybe I didn't turn it on enough. What's the deal, man? Where's my water? Stand by. All right, there we go. All right, let's fill this up. While it's filling up, 
we'll just check for leaks. So far, so good. We got some leaks. I wonder if I took these out when I painted the block and just never put them back in with thread sealant. Because we're dripping. Oh yeah, these aren't, these aren't tight at all. <laughs> all right, well, put some thread sealant on those, I guess. Put some Teflon on here, I'll put that back in. And we should be good. So again, this is why I filled it with just water instead of coolant. Because now we don't have a mess to clean up. Guess what? So I put those back together with some Teflon, filled it up, and obviously as I was filling it up, it got to the top and sploosh all over everything. Huge mess. So I started cleaning it all up. Check out what I found. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see that? That's a crack. It's cracked there. And this one is also cracked, although this one is not leaking at the moment. So that sucks. Gonna have to pull this head off, I guess, and get one that's not cracked. I don't have any stock 8BA heads, but my friend Terry Stenberg, he's probably got 20 or 30 of them. So I should be able to get one off of him. I traded him some hubcaps a while ago, so maybe maybe I can get a cylinder head in trade for the hubcaps I gave him. Bummer, I didn't want to pull this engine apart because that opens a whole bunch of, a whole new can of worms. And I was kind of going for the ignorance is bliss thing on this engine. I don't open it up and then I don't know what kind of problems it has. So I don't know, maybe we can just pull this head off and we'll not look at anything in there and we'll just put another head on put it on and go together, or put it back together. Oh well, there's nothing we can do about it right now, so we'll just move on to the next thing on the list towards getting it to start. Well, I just finished lunch, and I've come back from lunch, and this isn't, I wiped it off, and it's not full of water down here again, so our leak kind of stopped. So I'm optimistic that it just fixed itself over lunch, even though I know it didn't fix itself. And as soon as it pressures up, it's probably gonna leak, which is why we went to seven pound cap instead of the 13 pound cap. But anyways, we're gonna ignore that for the moment and move on to our fuel pump situation. So this is the fuel pump that was on the engine when we brought the car back. And as I mentioned earlier, it does not pump enough to keep the carburetor full at highway speed. So we're gonna pull this off, which is just two bolts here. Well, we got two bolts here to get it off the stand and then, but I think it's easier to take the stand right off the intake because there's a push rod that pokes up from there and then swap the stand over on the bench. So I'm gonna grab a 5 16 socket, or sorry, a half inch socket and take these two 5 16 nuts off Obviously our fuel lines are already disconnected, so we just gotta spook, pull it up. On the bench, we just got two 5 16 bolts holding the stand to the pump, and then they should separate. Ha! Just like that. So, here's our new pump. This is a Offenhauser pump. Now, these fuel pumps, these flathead fuel pumps, I used to be able to get them locally through my normal parts store, but they don't have them anymore. So I've only been able to get them through Rock Auto or Speedway. So Rock Auto, Speedway, Offenhauser brand, Carter brand, the last four, New fuel pumps I've come across. The little push rod piece right here is being mangled on all of them, every single one. This is what it's supposed to look like. It sits firm on there, nice and snug. This is 
just a piece of garbage. And you can send it back, but the one that they're gonna send you is the same thing, so I don't know what to do about that other than just fix it when we get the fuel pumps and put them back on. So it's not a huge deal. You just gotta like kind of slide this into place which doesn't want to slide right now. There we go. And then let's we'll put a little tack weld on right there just to kind of stop it from flopping around. What this piece does is attaches the fuel pump to the push rod and it holds it in place. So it's just kind of like a guide. Uh, aside from that, I've got a couple new fittings because the fittings that are in this pump are, that's not a fuel fitting, that's just a random piece of copper pipe that somebody, or brass pipe that somebody threw in there. Probably works, but these are a little bit better. So these early Ford fuel pumps and Stromberg and Holy 94 carburetors, they have a unique thread. You're not gonna find a fitting like this at your regular hardware store. So when I ordered this, I got this from Speedway. I made sure to order some new fittings for this as well. I forget what, I can't remember what the thread is exactly off the top of my head right now, but it's a specific thread. Probably you're not supposed to require thread sealant on these, but because everything today is such crap quality, I put thread sealant on it anyways, just because I don't trust them and I don't want leaks. So we're gonna tack weld this, thread sealant these back in. Okay, our pump is in, so now it's fuel line time. So the fuel line from the tank ends here. My plan was to run a fuel filter and then a little piece of hard line that I'd bent up to sit nice on the firewall like that and then that would go into the fuel pump. So this I've made twice now and I'm still not totally stoked on it. So you know what? We're not gonna do the hard line. Screw it, we're just gonna go from there to there, it's like a foot and a half. It'll be fine. It won't pass NHRA spec, but whatever. This car probably, I don't have any plans of racing this car anyways. So fuel filter, I'm gonna use this glass fuel filter. And I know instantly as before I even finish this sentence, you guys are gonna be in the comments saying like, glass fuel filters are the worst. Well, maybe, I don't know. I've never had any issues with them and I've been using them for years and years and years. In fact, this one was in the Roadster for 13 years and I just pulled it out recently because when we took that to the drag strip, NHRA won't let a glass fuel filter through tech, so we had to put a steel one in, but this filter is still perfectly fine. The thing I like about these filters is one, they're see-through, so you can see what's inside of there. You can see if your filter's actually plugged up or not, if it's time to be changed, with a steel fuel filter, you can't. You just guess. I don't know if it's plugged or not. I don't know what's in there. Maybe it's fine. The other thing I like about these ones is, well, not right this exact second, but
but they unscrew and you can unscrew it and take the element out and clean it. And I really like that as well. So I'm gonna run it. Like I said, I've never ever had an issue and I don't personally know anybody that has. So I don't know. And you know what? Hot rods are supposed to be dangerous anyways, right? That's what the movies told me. So we're gonna run this right down here. Then we'll do a little hose from there up to there. I just got back from the store. I got some fresh clamps. Cause remember when we were doing the line over there on a few videos back, I ran out of clamps. Well, I finally got clamps and yeah, let's make it happen. All right, our fuel system's done. Cool, well, not totally done. We still gotta put gas in it. But other than the gas, the fuel system should be done. So I don't know what to move on to next. Throttle linkage maybe, headers maybe? I don't know. It'll have to be tomorrow, I ran out of time for today. But um, we'll get into it first thing in the morning. One thing I forgot to mention with the fuel system is I like to use these style hose clamps. These are like fuel injection style which I know aren't pretty correct, but these ones don't strip. You can just crank them down and they come apart and they don't break and ruin your life. They're great. We'll see you in the morning. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna do the headers. We're finally gonna do the headers. I've been talking about doing the headers for like the last, what, four or five videos and it just never happened. So it's, it's happening, here we go. Like I mentioned earlier, these are Flowtech headers that I got from Holly Performance. A couple months back, they were having a huge inventory blowout. And these headers went from like $400 a pair to $61 a pair. So thanks, uh, thanks to Bruce who gave me the tip on those so that I could grab a set. I was reluctant to buy headers for this car because this is an unknown engine and I don't want to put a set of $400 headers on an engine that turns out to be a turd. So, but for 61 bucks, you know, I'll take a gamble and they're chrome. So a couple more horsepower there. These are inch and three quarter. Passenger side, this one here, fits no problem at all. I've got these reducers, I guess they're reducers, expanders. I guess it depends which way you look at it. These go from inch and three quarter to two inch. Why am I using two inch or going up to two inch rather than just run inch and three quarter? Uh, because the stainless tubing that I make my exhaust systems out of, I have in two inch. I don't have any inch and three quarter. It does exist, but I'd have to go and buy some and I've already bought two inch. So I'm going to use what I already have. On the end of here, we're going to put a V band clamp. Let me go grab a V band clamp here and I'll show you what they're all about. Much like our, Fuel injection hose clamps, they are, they're not a period correct piece, but they work really, really good. And I really like them. I think these uh, came from the, the import, the tuner world. So you've got your clamp and we've got two fittings. These guys weld perfect on there. Look how nice that fits. It's, it's a beautiful thing. So you weld one end to here, like so. And then you weld the other end, like so. They click together, see how they just like, boom, there's a little machined lip, kind of like a tongue and groove kind of thing. So those click together and then your band goes over top and squeezes them tight. 
nice tight machine finish. Once you start the car and this all gets hot and it expands, it's an even tighter finish. The cool thing with these is you can take them apart and put them back together a hundred times and never need a gasket. They just go together perfect every time. Which for a unknown engine that we're putting in here, there is a very good chance that we might be yanking this engine out in the near future. So that will just make everything so much nicer. That doesn't go in there. That goes in there. Driver's side header. We got to modify. It's notched out for a steering box. I don't know what steering box, but not our steering box. So we're going to have to get a little creative in there. Yes, we're going to damage the chrome. Sucks, but it doesn't matter because these are only $61. You know, we'll blow a little barbecue paint in there and nobody will ever know anyways. So, all right. Uh, let's do the hard one first. Let's do this one. I don't know what we got to modify in there yet, but we'll mock it up and see. On the subject of modifying headers, I put a video up recently of doing the headers on Aaron's truck. They are back from ceramic coating now. And look at that. It is perfect. You can't even tell. Cut and extended these headers. And then coming out of the headers, we've got our two inch stainless that we were just talking about. Two inch stainless straight pipes that run all the way back with a V-band clamp in the middle so that you can, if you gotta pull the rear end or something out, you can just undo those clamps and take the rear tail pipes off. So if we mock this header up, which I just did before I turned the camera on. You know, gotta make sure it works first, right? All right, oh, how to have it there. All right, so we're, we're almost in place. Our issue is this rear primary tube is hitting the adjuster on the steering box. So I'm gonna mark where it's touching here. We'll pull this out. Right here is our issue. There's two ways we can fix this, I think, maybe. Both ways might not actually work. Uh, first thing I wanna try is I wanna warm this up with the torch and dimple it to see if I can get enough of a dimple in there that it'll be okay. If that does not work, if we can't get enough dimple in there, then what we can do is actually cut this primary tube apart and then just reroute it. But I wanna try dimpling it first because we got nothing to lose by doing that. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys ever watch Motor Trend TV, but there's a show on there I really like called Engine Masters with uh, David Freiberger and Steve Dulcich. And they did an episode where they tested to see how much horsepower you actually lose by dimpling headers to clear steering boxes and stuff. You don't lose any. It didn't change anything on the dyno. In fact, they took a set of headers at the end of the episode and just mutilated them, destroyed them with sledgehammers and didn't make any difference for power. Not that I'm concerned about that. This is a stock flathead. When it was new, it made 100 horsepower. It's like 70 years old now, so it maybe makes 75 horsepower. Not worried about performance right now. We'll uh, take this over to the bench and warm it up. I've switched out the rosebud tip for this little welding tip just to make it a little more controlled. Hopefully we've got enough gas left in the torch. It is almost empty right now. Oop, dropping axles, man. It just goes through so much acetylene. All right, I'm just gonna heat this area up nice and red. Chrome's blistering. And then we got a ball peen hammer here that we're gonna use to dimple. I don't know, let's try that. I don't know if that'll be enough or not, but we'll give it a try and see. Look at all those pretty colors. 
see what happens. I blew it off with some compressed air to cool it down. I prefer that over water because it's not as messy. Um, we're closer, but we're not quite. I'm gonna mark it in another spot. We gotta put a, we dimpled it not quite right where it exactly needed to be which obviously we weren't able to tell because we weren't able to get it in this close before. So if we pull it out now, I just marked it right here. We'll heat it up and put a, that's where the adjuster nut is hitting now. But we're a lot closer. Well, I don't think this is gonna work. We've got enough clearance around the, the adjuster nut now, but as you can see, we still need to go up like another half an inch. And this second primary tube down here where my finger is, this whole area here is starting to run into the bottom of the steering box. Like it can't go up anymore. So I think what we're gonna have to do is cut it off here where my finger is and cut it off there. We'll bolt the header on and then just kinda make up some new pieces to go in there. It was worth a try though. There was nothing to lose. It only took a few minutes, so we'll just cut it off. So I'm gonna start by cutting it right here and just completely remove that section. We'll bolt this on and go from there. I've got a box of J-bands down here left over from when we built the Arden headers, but I just realized these are inch and five eighths, not inch and three quarters. So that's not gonna work. I just called the auto parts store and they've got one, one and three quarter inch J-band in stock. The next closest one is in Edmonton, which would be about a week away. I don't know if we can build that with one or not, but we'll, I, I mean, we'll start on it. And we just might not be able to get it finished, but we'll try our best. We'll start by cutting and I don't know, we might be able to, I've got flanges already made. So we might not even just use this flange anymore. We'll just use a brand new one. Then we don't have to worry about dissecting any of that. I think, I don't know. We're just winging it right now. brand new set of headers in three simple steps. So because we can only get one J-Bend right now, I'm gonna try to salvage as much as I can out of here. So we're gonna cut it off there and we're gonna cut it off here because this has a little bend in it too that we might be able to use. I don't know. Like I said, we're just winging it. We got this side bolted on and we're just gonna build off of that. So I've taken a couple scrap pieces that I had and we can go straight off of straight off of here and then kick out over here and run down right behind the steering box. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we've got equal distance between the steering column tube and the wishbone. And we should be far enough away from the clutch pedal, but that shouldn't be an issue. So that will solve our routing. And then from there, if we can take our J-Bend and hopefully come like 90 degrees out of this port and straight down into there, I think we'll work. I'm going to 
tack this up. And then we'll just have to wait until it's almost 12 o'clock now and our J-Bend, they figured they would have, they had to bring it from another store. They figured they'd have it for 12.30. So maybe I'll tack this up, we'll have lunch and then go pick up the J-Bend. I made a mark and kind of basically clocked everything with the Sharpie before I took it apart. And then just used these little clamps again, the ones we made in the other header video, to hold everything. So there's our, there's our new header. Well, we've got lots of clearance now. I can get my hands all the way around in here. So now if we make a new flange and just have a straight 90 degree down into there, I think will work. This old one, I mocked it up and it is nowhere close. It's gonna run right into the steering box. So probably won't use any of this piece at all. Well, good news, bad news, good news, good news. Great day to go for a Roadster drive. Bad news, the radius that parts store had was huge, so that's not gonna work. Good news, Glenn found one that will work. Bad news, it won't be here till Wednesday. Good news, I've got this one single random flathead header that came with all those Model A and 32 parts I bought a few videos back. And I think that bend will probably work. This header looks a little crusty, but it's all brand new metal. So maybe we'll cut it here, cut it here and see if that'll fit. Or maybe we'll cut this piece out. That's a little bit easier. And I think we can still make that one work. All right, I think this is gonna work. Let's get a flange, and then we'll start whittling the bottom. This end down, we'll start whittling it down to fit over that radius. I thought I had flanges cut out, but apparently not. So we'll just cut out a new one here real quick. Bam. If anybody needs flanges like that, they're on my website, lgspeedcustom.com. Ta-da! Check it out. With the flange bolted on, we can start fitting this piece now. We gotta keep this bolt right here in mind. You wanna be able to have access to those once this is all welded up. There's nothing worse than a set of headers that you can't get the bolt in because somebody put the primary tube in the way. So originally I started notching this out like the same way I would notch out a roll cage, but then I remembered we still gotta blast a hole through here. So I just, oh no, my hole saw just fell out. So I just grabbed the hole saw and I'm just gonna drill a hole right through there. And then we can Slide that down in the hole and trace exactly where it needs to be, I think. Look at that, that fits great. I've got good clearance through here. I can get my fingers through there. We can still get our nut and bolt in. So I took some chalk and traced around where we gotta trim it. The reason I used chalk rather than a Sharpie is because I couldn't get a Sharpie all the way back inside there. And even this little piece of chalk, it was still a little bit hard to get in there. 
So if we pull this out now, here. Ah. There's our marks where we're gonna trim. We're probably, we'll probably leave like a quarter inch on the outside of that chalk mark, just so that we, we don't wanna be too shy when we go in there. We need some little bit of meat to wiggle around and weld. So I'm gonna trim this up now. I'll probably just use a little carbide bit and then we can tack it up in there, pull the whole thing out and weld it up. It's all notched out, fits nice. Before we put it back in, I just hit it quickly with the DA with some 80 grit to knock. There was some paint on there and a little bit of surface rust. So we'll slide it in now, tack it up and then weld it on the bench. Well, those are all welded up. It turned out really good. It got a little weird in here. Uh, I blew through there, so I had to fill it back up. It got a little too heavy, too hot and heavy, but uh, it's still okay. Welded our uh, flanges on here, so they're good to go. I was gonna paint this with, I've got this cast iron high heat paint, the same stuff that nothing in here is painted with, so that's a bad example, Never mind. Uh, but yeah, I was going to blow it in with this cast iron gray header paint, but I don't have any. I thought I did. I can't find it, so I must not have any. It's the end of the day anyway, so I'll just hit Canadian Tire and grab a can, and we'll paint it tomorrow. And then we can put them on, and then the headers are done. All right, it's the next day. I went over to see Rick this morning and got some cast iron header paint. I really like this stuff. It's got a really nice color to it, and it holds up well. So we're just going to just paint this area. I know it's not going to match, but it's going to be fine. I don't care. And if I don't care, you guys shouldn't care. It's all going to be hidden behind the steering box anyways. And you know what? Three quarters of the headers are still chrome. And three quarter chrome headers are better than no chrome headers. Right? Right. So we'll paint this, let it dry, and then I think we can bolt the headers on. While our cast iron header paint was drying, I went ahead and bolted this side on. It went on just absolutely as expected. There was nothing weird on that side at all. Now that this is dry, we can bolt it on. All right, there we go. We got a header. Not too bad. So off of here, we can run the rest of our exhaust system. Well, at the beginning of this video, I said I wanted to focus on making it yard drive, and I was hoping to have that done by the end of the video, but unfortunately, we just ran out of time. But we're this much closer. We've got our coolant system pretty much done. I think we're gonna have to change this head, but we're just gonna ignore that problem for right now. Uh, we got our fuel system finished up. We just gotta put gas in it. And we've got our headers modified and installed on the car. So our next step from here, we still need throttle linkage. We need to wire the engine. We don't need to wire the whole car, but we just need to wire enough that we have, like we've got no battery cables in it right now. We've got no solenoid, no ignition switch, no wire to the coil. So we're gonna do all that in the next video. And hopefully the next video, we actually get to fire this thing up and take it for a drive. Unfortunately, I got to run right now. We got to rip over to Salt Spring Island, which is a quick ferry ride away. 
to pick up Rob Hull's Model A Coupe. We're bringing it back to the shop to redo an engine swap that went sideways on his car. So it might be a week or two before I'm back on this, which is why I'm gonna wrap this video up now. But thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to check out the website, lgspeedcustom.com, where we've got LG Speed and custom shirts, as well as the flanges that we made. Those are on there. All sorts of cool, fun, hot rod parts. So go check that out. Really, really appreciate it. And yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.